Hi, this is Katie of riddlelove.com and welcome to my menu planning for the week. I thought it would be easier to do a video on this instead of writing it out just because there's so much to explain and it's just easier to show you this time around. So welcome to my kitchen table. Here we go, let's menu plan. I like to plan once a week because my grocery shopping routine is basically weekly. We pick up raw milk once a week. We go to the farmer's market every week and so it works out. What I like to serve every week um, at the dinner table and breakfast, lunch, and snacks uh, basically are dictated from what I can find at the farmer's market because we like to eat uh, local and we like to eat organic and we like to eat in season which is all found at a farmer's market. It's fresher, it's better for you, and it's what your body needs this time of year. So. I go to the farmer's market, I pick up what I need, and that's on a Saturday. And just because of how our life is right now, basically Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon, either before or after church, I menu plan and it's kind of a special time of week for me. I love it. I take my little quiet time, I grab something yummy to drink, like what a kifa. And I just enjoy myself. I like food, I like planning food, and it's fun thinking about eating all these fun new recipes or recipes we've liked for a long time. So Saturday morning, farmer's market, pick up as much as I can um, uh, that we can eat over the course of the week. And um, basically the tools I use for menu planning are my computer, my cell phone, and my trusty cookbooks. Even though I'm using technology, my method of meal planning is kind of archaic. You could pretty much just use a pencil and paper instead of a cell phone. The only benefit that I like about using a cell phone is I bring it everywhere. So my lists for grocery shopping or anything like that is on my phone. Also, huge, huge, huge benefit is an alarm clock on the phone. More about that in a little bit. So my menu planning starts throughout the week. I go to Google Reader, find out who's been writing what on the blogs I'm subscribed to, and if there's a recipe that I want to try out, then I save it. Now if you're a Mac user, this is going to make a lot of sense. If you're not, I'm hoping you can translate this into PC world and make it work for you. But I have a bookmark bar up here, and um, there's a lot of folders that I use. Some of the folders are um, slow cooking recipes, gaps recipes, raw recipes gluten-free recipes since we're still transitioning into eating gaps and I will save recipes I want to try the following week up in these folders so when it's time to plan I've got a whole new list of recipes I can pull from so if there's something I want I get out my I have a list for breakfast lunch and dinner and snacks every day of the week if I don't do that then it it's lunchtime and I'm saying, hey kids, how about some apple and cheese slices again today? And there's lots of weeping and gnashing of teeth and it's just not pretty. So if I'm planned, I'm prepared, I'm equipped, and we're not eating apple and cheese slices every day for lunch. So I find anything I want to try here. I input it into my weekly list, basically, of meals. And then while I'm making my list of what I'm going to make, I am also writing my list, my shop, my grocery shopping list at the same time. Anything I don't have already in my fridge or my pantry gets written down on my, on my grocery list for the week. And I usually go grocery shopping the following day after I make my menu. It just has worked out that way. So I pull from new recipes from blogs and things like that um, from the computer. Then I also use my happy cookbooks. One more thing. If I like a recipe that I've tried, if my family likes it from from um, a recipe from online, I will print it out and it gets archived in my homemade cookbook right here that's sturdy and well used. If I don't like it, there's no paper that's been wasted. I just take it out of my folders and we've tried it and there you go. So I also can pull from that some old favorites that we've used throughout the years or some new ones that we've put in from um, successful recipes I found in other blogs and basically all the cookbooks that I use you can find them in um, the sidebar of my blog that where the books are kind of listed everything I use is listed in there if you want to check that out so recipes inputted grocery shopping inputted the last thing I do that is crucial 
for me at least, um, is I remind myself um, when I need to soak something for the following day or you know um, in the morning for the for that night, I'll set my alarm on my phone. And this is a huge lifesaver because you can learn a whole bunch about nutrition, but if you can't apply it, it's no good. So I remind myself when I need to soak something. And um, so let's say tomorrow I'm gonna make porridge or oatmeal for breakfast. I will set my alarm for tonight at five o'clock to soak my oats for porridge the next morning. That way I'm already in the kitchen at five o'clock making dinner, so it's not like I have to stop whatever I'm doing. I soak my oats, which takes you know all of a minute, and it'll be ready, and I don't have to think about it anymore. And I do that all throughout the week. If I am gonna make something with um, navy beans on Wednesday, then on Tuesday night, I remind myself, soak however many cups of navy beans I need. Um, that way, all my reminders are inputted, everything, I don't have to think of anything. It's all in here and nothing gets forgotten, everything gets soaked, and it really isn't hard. It just takes forethought. So this is a huge lifesaver for me, the reminders. <laughs> um, I think that is just about it. That's how I kind of plan my meals every day. It takes at the most an hour a week, but I really, really enjoy it. I love it because food is fun. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment on this post and I'll make sure to answer. I hope this is helpful. Have a great week.